Hello and welcome to Chapter 10. Today we're going to talk about approaching the customer with the adaptive selling model. Until now, we've talked a lot about the adaptive selling model and what leads up to the adaptive selling model and relationship selling and building a relationship and those types of things. From now on, through the rest of the book, we're going to get into the nuts and the bolts of what happens when you get in front of the customer. What do you say? How do you develop needs identification questions? Now, with that being said, we've kind of worked on that all semester because we've talked about spin selling and we've been role playing about spin selling, etc. So really, and fortunately, the rest of the book is kind of a review over what we've done. There's some strategies, there's some models that I want to make sure that you understand. But really, we've been role playing this and we've been practicing it for most of the semester. So a lot of this should not be new to you. Again, we're building towards understanding what to say in front of a customer. We're also building towards that final role play at the end of the semester. So with that, sit back, relax, and let's get started with Chapter 10, the Adaptive Selling Model and Presentation Skills. The objective of Chapter 10, Approaching the Customer with Adaptive Selling, is to really try to understand a strategy going into the customer and a strategy for when you get in front of the customer. We've talked about prospecting in the past. We've talked about how to do it. We've, we've talked about case studies and um, how you would go about finding prospects and things like that. I think this, this chapter is more about... Um, what will you do actually when you get in there? So here's a really, really good model that we've kind of gone through through this book. First of all, we've developed a personal selling philosophy, and that was the first few chapters, and a relationship strategy, including ethics and how to act and how to develop relationships. And then we also talked about a product strategy, being an SME or a subject matter expert and being um, the, the product expert and also being the customer expert and your expert on your competition and then we've talked about developing a customer strategy and now we're going to talk about developing a presentation strategy and that's going to kind of take us through the rest of the book developing a presentation strategy we're going to prepare objectives and a presentation plan and um, discuss service and those types of things as we move forward in this chapter so First of all, you review objectives, review the model, and then review the presentation plan. Um, first of all, you've got to understand, what do I want? you got to ask yourself, what do I want at the end of this meeting? Sometimes it might be just another meeting. Sometimes it might be just information. Sometimes it might be the sale. There's a lot of different things, a lot of different types of objectives that you could have as you're moving through a sales call. Not every sales call is about closing the sale. Sometimes it's about building relationships. Sometimes it's about understanding the customer's needs only on this one. Sometimes it's about understanding the customer's needs so you can come back with a proposal. Sometimes it's about getting a, another meeting with the prospect and maybe the prospect's management. Or being able to make a presentation to upper management. So, the big thing is understand what is my best scenario coming out. What do I want coming out of the sales call? What do I want to accomplish? Then you review whatever models you're going to use. In our particular class, we use spend selling. We've talked about spend selling. We've role played spend selling for the last three weeks. We're going to continue to role play spend selling, and then you're going to have a final role play and be graded on spend selling. So um, we, you need to understand your model and understand your objectives. Then what I always do and what the book tries to tell you is write down kind of how you want the presentation to go. What's your plan? It's almost like a roadmap. I want to do this first, do this second, do this third. Be prepared for your needs identification questions. Be prepared for your situation questions and your identification questions and your needs questions, your spin selling. Be, be prepared for that. And then finally, oftentimes I used to, and the book recommends that you prepare a approach worksheet. 
and that approach worksheet could be kind of a mind map with says if this then that if the customer says this then I'm going to say this if the customer says this I'm going to say that those types of things but really understanding that presentation plan not only in your mind but writing it down in a worksheet oftentimes can be the difference between having a successful sales call and having a non-successful sales call. So obviously the first thing you want to do is establish rapport. That's key. Even with spin selling, we talked about needs identification. Before that, establishing a rapport. Sometimes it's noticing pictures on the prospect's desk. Sometimes it's noticing the artwork in the prospect's office, etc. Any type of rapport you can establish. Now you don't want to waste the prospect's time by talking about what you did last Sunday or last weekend, but you do want to understand a little bit about the prospect and establish rapport. And then oftentimes obtain permission. Obtain permission to ask questions. Obtain permission to take notes. Many times it's important if you ask, may I take notes? Because oftentimes it puts the prospect at ease. If you just start writing things down, sometimes the prospect might get a little nervous or might get a little edgy or something like that. So if you ask, say, I'd just like to jot down some notes maybe for the proposal or something like that, that is just being polite and it also sets the prospect at ease. So you obtain information for the customer's file. Oftentimes I obtain information such as name, phone number, email address, best time to get a hold of them, best way to get a hold of the prospect, those types of things. So oftentimes these are just informational questions and I usually tell the prospect, I'm just going to ask you a few questions for my notes to make sure I have good contact information, to make sure that I can contact you when I need you and contact you the best way you want me to contact, whether it be email, whether it be a phone call, whether it be a text message or something like that. And then Involve the customer, provide value to justification, compare, contrast different solutions. Make sure you are talking about a need selling and a solution selling. Remember, we don't sell pro project products. Excuse me. That was a tough one to say. We don't sell products. We don't sell services. What we do is we sell solutions. So team selling has emerged as a presentation strategy. Two weeks ago, we talked about that in class when the real estate, remember the real estate uh, case study that we did, use a team selling approach. So oftentimes with a team selling approach, it's going to require a lot more preparation. One of the things that you can't do is gang up or have your prospect think that you're ganging up on him or her. If that's the case, they'll clam up and they'll end a meeting as abruptly as they possibly can. One of the problems with team selling is sometimes a prospect may feel like they're being ganged up on or may feel like uh, they're losing the edge or they're at a disadvantage. That's the last thing you want to do. So often, always ask if they mind if you bring in a colleague, etc. I remember way back when I first started selling, way before even I started selling pharmaceuticals at Bausch & Lomb, which I consider my official um, first job, I took an internship uh, selling copiers. Um, kind of a tough business, but um, I did well with it for the first three months. But I remember calling on a purchasing manager in a hospital, and I brought my sales manager with me, and the purchasing manager wouldn't let him in. He said, I will not um, see a sales manager. I only see sales reps. So there are some buyers that are oftentimes um, won't see a team selling. So team sales approach will require more rapport building, more setting the pro prospect at ease, clear understanding of each role of the team, making sure that you've rehearsed so that you're not jumping on each other or stepping on each other's toes or contradicting each other, etc. And again, a clear objective. Sometimes a team approach, you have a salesperson and a technical person. And that technical person can clear up any misunderstandings or answer any technical uh, issues from the buyer. 
Sometimes in a team sales approach, you have a technical person, a salesperson, and a finance person. Maybe somebody will, who will help finance the equipment or the product in which you're going to sell. So it's, a, again, a total solution package, and it's got to benefit the client and not just benefit the uh, particular salespeople. So planning the approach, really review uh, relationship strategy, the product strategy, which we've already talked about, the customer strategy, which we've already talked about. We've had all those uh, chapters. We've gone over that in class. Or we've gone over that in the video lecture. And then finally, the review, the presentation strategy. So in this particular case, here's figure 10.3, six-step presentation planning approach. One is the approach, establishing rapport. Another one, need discovery. Understanding the needs, understanding the needs of the buyer. And then presentation, bearing in mind that the presentation may not be to close a sale. The presentation may be presenting your company and not a particular product in order to get another opportunity at the prospect or at the prospect's organization. So remember, your presentation has to do with your objections. Step four, negotiation. Oftentimes, negotiation is really handling objectives. Anticipating buyers concerned, anticipating prospects concerns, and handling objections. Nobody is going to say your price is too low. No one's going to say, I've got all the time in the world. Come in anytime you want. If you ask for a second meeting, no one's going to say, sure, I don't have anything to do. Come on in. They're always going to give you an objection. I'm too busy. Your price is too high. I like what I'm buying now. I like your competition. I've got a problem with your company. Whatever it is, that's the negotiation. We call it handling objections, and we're going to talk about that later in the semester. We're actually going to role play handling objections. But just to, to give you an idea, really there's two things. There's an objection due to a misunderstanding or an objection due to a drawback. Your price might be higher, right? The person might be busy. That is a drawback. It's true. It's not a misunderstanding. So you need to be able to handle those. Step five is closing, asking for the sale. Many of your, um, many of your uh, early sales reps or young sales rep have a difficulty saying, can I place the order? Can I get a truckload, et cetera? And then finally, servicing the sale, which is step six, making sure you follow up, making sure the delivery happened and all those other things. Those truly are the six steps to a presentation plan. As you prepare your worksheet, you should prepare each one of those steps in your presentation plan. And one of the biggest things that you should do is be able to understand what are the questions I'm going to ask to get to their needs and what are the objections you think you're going to get? Because if you're prepared for them, then you can make sure that you understand it. I call it hitting the deuce or hitting the curveball. If you understand that a curveball is coming, you can hit it. But if you don't, if it comes out from left field or if it comes uh, from nowhere, then sometimes that's... Uh, it's a real stickler and it's a sticking point in your presentation. So making sure that you are prepared for the questions that you're going to ask and the objections that are going to come by is going to be key or paramount to the sale. So let's go over the six-step presentation plan in more detail. Again, as we talked, it's approach, need, discovery, presentation, negotiation, close, and servicing the sale. So starting out with object objectives for the approach. Really, the approach is all about building rapport and capturing the sales per or the prospect's attention, making sure that they know that you are legitimate, you are going to have a relationship or want to have a relationship with the customer or with a prospect from a selling standpoint, of course. And um, I guess that did sound weird, didn't it? And also making sure that they know that you're going to act in an ethical ma manner. You want to capture the prospects or the buyer's attention. And you want to make sure that they know that you're there to help them. Not just win for you, but a win-win for both. And really you want to transition into the next part of the sale. So this is all about making appointments. Making appointments oftentimes is done by phone. Also, it's done by email, etc. 
um, some practices to making the appointment by phone, making sure that you're clear and making sure that um, you identify yourself and the company. You tell them what the objective of the meeting is going to be. Make sure that you respect the prospect or the buyer's time and make sure that you confirm the appointment before you hang up so that there's no misunderstandings. One of the key things about sales appointments is make sure that you arrive on time. Oftentimes your prospects can run late, that's fine, but make sure that you arrive on time. So here's some uh, tips on making appointments by phone. Um, social contact to build rapport. There's three areas of conversations, um, and you can read this particular slide. Uh, making sure that you are building rapport and doing the right things. Another main goal of the opening is to capture the prospect's attention. There's seven common approaches to that. Uh, the agenda approach, and you could read them right there. Oftentimes it's good to have an agenda. Even if you don't have the agenda printed out for the prospect or the buyer, you can say today we're going to talk about these types of things or these three things or these four things or the objective of this meeting is this and we're going to go through these three things. So it gains attention. It lets the buyer or the prospect understand why we're here and what we're going to do and when the meeting is going to be concluded. Oftentimes people will say, I'm only going to take about a half hour of your time or 15 minutes of your time and then respect that. If you say 15 minutes, take 15 minutes. If you say a half hour, take half hour because the prospect will ref respect you for that. Demonstration, a product demonstration approach, letting them know that we're going to have a demonstration of the product today and that's why we're here. Referral approach, the reason I'm here is somebody from your company told me to come and call you or we are your customer or your supplier or what have you tell them who the referral is from questioning approach survey approach and uh, premium approach although with a premium approach means giving out premiums and things like that or saying premiums oftentimes make sure that you check with the buyer to make sure it's not against company policy so building a business contact worksheet, there's a, I'm going to let you read the slide. It's pretty self-explanatory. My worksheet always consisted of what I wanted to say, the questions I wanted to ask, and the objectives, the objections that I thought I was going to run into. Understanding that, making sure that you have that, a good uh, handle on that will really help with the sales call. There is the um, other contact worksheets and you can read those at your leisure or you can pause the video for those. So oftentimes combination approaches is both referrals and questions in order to for need discovery. Make sure that you let the prospect know why you were, why you were there. And oftentimes, oftentimes, I let the prospect know or the buyer know the objective of the particular sales call. Now, in later chapters, we're going to get into the actual needs discovery part. Today was just really the approach. We're going to get into the needs discovery part, and we're going to get into the, the questioning, the closing, and all that. Each chapter takes a piece of that as we move forward. So today was really about trying to set up the presentation, set up the presentation strategy, and gain the approach to this uh, presentation. One of the things, though, that I can really lay my hat on or really emphasize is the fact that you're going to be nervous in your sales calls, especially you're going to be nervous if you're talking to upper management, you might be talking to VPs, CEOs, you might be talking to a number of them or a whole group of them. <clears throat> you might be talking to four or five executives in one particular meeting. There's going to be nervousness. The book calls it sales call reluctance and you can read the definition there, thoughts, feelings, and behavioral patterns that limit what you can accomplish. Oftentimes, though, that's because of nervousness. You're just nervous going into the sale. 
and or into the sales call. And that's to be expected. But if you plan the sales call, you plan the questions that you want to ask, you plan your approach, you plan your opening and your building rapport and your establishment of rapport with those people or with whoever you're calling on, it makes it a lot easier for you and it helps with sales call reluctance. Sales call reluctance, and it's not here, they have the cause of uh, fear of taking risk, fear of group presentations, lack of self-confidence, and fear of rejection. But the major one is nervousness and fear of rejection. First of all, you're not going to make every sale. I've said this before. A good salesperson closes 50% or less of every sales call they go on. Now, with that being said, in those numbers, sometimes you're not there to close a sale. Sometimes you're only there to get uh, opportunities or to get information or to get a next, uh, a next meeting. But really, if you think about it, a salesperson fails, if, including asking for appointments, if including asking for appointments and prospecting. A salesperson fails more than they don't. They truly do. So, you cannot have a fear of rejection because you're going to have rejection during a sales call. The key thing is if you feel confident, if you have a plan, if you understand what you're trying to do, and if you understand the objectives and you have a good worksheet written down, then you'll do just fine in all of your sales calls. Suggestions to manage sales call reluctance. My thing is a worksheet. Uh, the book has a few. Be optimistic about your outcome. Practice your approach. I've done that a hundred times. I've practiced the approach in the parking lot in the car before I've walked in. I've practiced the approach in my office. I've practiced my approach uh, in front of the mirror. All of those different things. Recognize that it's normal to feel nervous. I actually used to tell myself, if I'm not nervous, I'm worried. It means I'm not taking it serious enough. If I was nervous, that was good because that meant I was on the edge and I felt it. And then also understand the commitment to your goals and why you're there. Remember, those prospects are just human beings like you are. Even though they might be in authority figures or um, jobs of power or what have you, they're still just like you. So having that confidence and not being nervous is a true key to being successful in a sales presentation. Here are seven questions. Please take four. I don't care which ones you take. Please take four and give me two pages of a write-up like we did before. Again, I want it in memo format uh, like you did before. Some of you were quite creative in your memos and uh, made me smile. Uh, take four out of the seven, answer four, give me uh, two pages, not two pages each, but two pages total, so about a half page for each one of the four. Make sure it's double spaced and turn that in to me when we are back together on Monday. With that, I will be signing off. It's a pleasure and we will talk to you on Monday.